Today, Finn and I are going backpacking for the first time by ourselves. I ended up in the middle of nowhere with no service and no people. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanted to say a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video and for helping make this backpacking trip possible. Surfshark is a VPN, which is probably something that anyone who uses public Wi-Fi should probably be using in 2022. To put it simply, a VPN helps keep your online identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. They're especially important when you're using a lot of public Wi-Fi, like Finn and I on the road, because public Wi-Fi can be a goldmine for hackers. You can also use a VPN to unblock blocked content libraries and websites that aren't available in your country. We use ours to watch TV shows and movies that aren't available in the United States, like How I Met Your Mother or the Harry Potter movies. By switching our location to a place like Canada or Turkey, it unlocks those libraries. So if you're somebody who uses a lot of public Wi-Fi or you just want to be able to switch your virtual location, Surfshark is a great choice. It's highly rated and it's the only VPN to offer an unlimited amount of devices on one account. And for you guys, Surfshark is offering 83% off plus a 30 day no risk money back guarantee if you use the code Mariah or use the link in my description. Okay, now on to the backpacking. Hello. Hi. Good morning. It's time to wake up now. Good morning. <laughs> it, it's literally pitch black. Oh man. I'm just putting this clip in to emphasize how early I'm waking up. It's freaking early. Out of gas. Welcome to Los Angeles, the world of large interstates, way too much traffic. I don't really have anything else to say about it. Today, Finn and I are going backpacking for the first time ever alone. Four years ago, five years ago, I went on my first ever backpacking trip. My mom and I drove from our hometown of Monterey all the way down to Los Angeles, where we took a ferry over to Catalina Island and we backpacked the Trans Catalina Trail, which is a four or five night, 40 some odd mile backpacking trail. It was beautiful, it was safe, there were bison, it was an island, we got to camp on the beach for God's sakes. Since I found myself here in Southern California for tax season, I started to think like, would it be weird to go do that trail by myself? It took about a week of researching and debating with myself to get to the point where I felt confident enough to make the reservations to backpack this trail. Well, a portion of the trail. Only certain campgrounds on the island are dog friendly and honestly, I wasn't interested in having an uncomfortable first solo trip. So in the end, I drew up a plan to hike 15.6 miles in total to and from the Parsons Landing campground where you get to sleep on the beach and you're provided with water, firewood, and a pit toilet. In a quarter mile, take exit 1B for Ferry Street. It smells great here. Wait, four, two, five, east. Uh, please do not leave your parking ticket on dashboard. Okay, this is my pre-hike spiel. I'm nervous, but I'm trying to convince myself to calm down. Am I scared? Yes. Am I terrified? No. As far as Finn goes, he's still sleeping. He doesn't usually get up until like nine. I'm a little bit worried about the ferry and I'm a little bit worried about the last couple miles of the trail. I might have to carry him. And if I do, that will be annoying, but it'll be fine. I think he'll love the beach though. Okay, I'm gonna go inside and get my tickets. Okay, it's gonna be a little bumpy going over because there is a bit of high winds right now, okay. so let's just be aware. How long is the ferry? This one's gonna be about like two hours because they're gonna stop in Avalon. <sighs> We're ready. We're not ready. We're ready. We're gonna be fine. Watching this footage back feels like remembering pieces of a muddled dream. Finn and I walked onto the ferry and we were pleasantly surprised to find out that they didn't care if Finn wasn't wearing his muzzle. Yes, this ferry requires a muzzle for all of the dogs, which I found kind of wild, but I was grateful to find that so long as he was in my lap, no one seemed to care at all. So I spent the two hour ride drinking my coffee, taking a nap, and enjoyed the feeling that came with knowing that we were leaving the busyness of the mainland behind us. There's whiskey inside my veins. I'm feeling heavy and I can't explain how I feel for you. You got me dizzy and feeling blue. Ooh. 
Welcome to chapter one, <laughs> getting to the campground. I just checked in at the visitor center. Apparently I'm the only camper at this campground tonight. I don't like being alone in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I never really have, but I guess we're gonna be working on that here today or something. One mile down, seven more to go. The hike passed by pretty painlessly, the road winding, hugging the ocean the whole way, bringing us by half a dozen coves where the water was so light you could see the ocean bed. We only stopped three times, twice for water, once for lunch, and although I was worried about Finn's stamina and the heat, he never faltered, and so it was almost surprising when we passed by the last curve and found ourselves overlooking our home for the next 36 hours. This is my site. Exciting. That was supposed to be a pun. It was a really stupid one. Oh, ow. To be honest, I can't believe I can't believe that we made it. I don't want to say that I didn't think that I had it in me, but I kind of didn't think that I had it in me. And I don't mean like the hiking, it's not the physical hiking here that was the block for me. For me it was the mental block of like buying the gear, getting the reservations, having the faith in myself to be able to do this safely. Um, I don't know why I don't have more faith in myself. I feel like I should give myself more opportunities to prove that I'm capable because it feels damn good. It does. It looks delectable. <laughs> I love this. I want to do this more often. Day one was a massive success. I loved how much time hiking gave me to think and it just felt good to move and to move with purpose. Like I wasn't just on a walk. I was on a walk to get home, if that makes sense. And as of right now, the sun just is gone and it's pretty dark outside and I'm not scared. Like don't get me wrong, I am guarded. I'm guarded, but I do have a weapon. And I also have my Garmin, so, oh shoot, I need to message my mom. I told her that I would message her. Oh, it's sent. I can't believe I almost forgot to send that message. That could have been bad. Um, I'm not leaving tomorrow. The whole point of this trip was to be able to come out and relax for two days. So tomorrow, I'm probably just gonna putt-putt around and do whatever my heart feels like doing in the moment. I'm gonna set my alarm for sunrise and I will see you guys for coffee in the morning. Good morning from me and my bedhead. Whoa. 
I came out on this trip hoping to relax, and when I got out here, I realized that not only was there no service or people to talk to at the campground, but I also severely underestimated how much battery power I needed to be able to use my phone, which is also my filming camera and also home to the books that I downloaded for this trip. So on this second day, I had to get pretty creative to entertain myself, and by creative, I mean I ended up doing a lot of nothing, which might sound boring, but on this day, it was actually literally my heaven. I did go on a short day hike, though. When I was walking this last mile yesterday, I saw all these grassy hills. All I wanted to do was get off trail and just go sit up there. So that's what I'm doing. Also, Finn wanted to go on a walk. He's filled to the brim with energy again, so. <laughs> You're so happy to be outside, huh? I felt more like myself on this day just sitting here journaling for hours than I have in months. I didn't see a single human being all day and as much as it did surprise me, I actually really enjoyed it. The timing of my day revolved around nothing other than how hungry I felt and by the time the sun started to set, I think I started to understand the allure of backpacking. It's kind of painful and kind of uncomfortable, but this feeling of absolute freedom, the quiet rhythm that I fell into after 20 hours alone out on this island, it isn't comparable to anything that I've felt in the van yet, and I have a feeling that I'll be chasing this feeling a lot more now that I know that it exists. You good, bro? That scared the living crap out of me. It's, oh, man, your freaking paws are so cold. It's our final night here. I think it's kind of hysterical that I came out here because I wanted to be around people and I wanted to be in service for my first solo trip. And instead, I ended up in the middle of nowhere with no service and no people. <laughs> that being said, I was hearing voices like five minutes ago, so I'm wondering if people showed up, but I don't really want to know, whatever. Anyways, I'm trying the water hot boiling water in a sock thing tonight. I'm hoping that this will keep my toes a little bit warmer. So far it's working out well. I mean, it feels like a hand warmer. Although when I was putting it in there, I realized putting boiling water in a plastic bottle, if there's a leak, I'm toast. So I probably wouldn't do this again, at least with this setup. Next time I'm gonna have some hand warmers. That's for sure. I already messaged my mom and I think I'm just gonna go lay here for the next however long until I fall asleep. It's only like six o'clock right now. <laughs> this, was a, this was a damn solid trip though. Highly recommend if you're looking for a first solo trip, this is a good one. I don't think that it can get any safer than going to an established campground where they provide water and firewood. And if anything goes wrong, there's a road right there and you can just get picked up. Anyways, that's all I have to say tonight. Good night. The next morning I woke up, packed up camp, and put one foot in front of the other all the way back to the morning ferry, which I missed by literally eight minutes. So instead, I spent all day in Two Harbors journaling a lot about how wild it felt to accomplish something that had felt so impossible literally a week before. And then I hopped on the evening ferry and proceeded to get ridiculously seasick. The end. I'm mashed potatoes. I'm biscuits and gravy. What? Genuine question, what is my life? I'm starting to think I might be a tad bit crazy. Does anybody else have a spider infestation? Because I have a spider infestation. It kind of tastes like hot Cheetos. <laughs> oh lord. 
Okay, please hold. What? Looks like a chicken pack. <laughs> 